Hey guys, welcome to How To Do Computers. I'm Mike and today we're going to be learning about storage configuration in Proxmox. This can be one of the more confusing things for the Proxmox newcomer as there are many options and settings available to you and if you're just starting out they can be quite overwhelming. The aim of this video is to demystify and shed some light on the different approaches to setting up storage in Proxmox. So first off, I'd like to clear up one misconception that I often hear about storage in Proxmox, and that's that you can't install virtual machines or store ISO images or backups on the same local storage that Proxmox itself is installed to. If you followed my initial install or Proxmox configuration videos, which I'll link below, you can see that that isn't true, and it is entirely possible to install Proxmox to a single drive and use that same drive for storage as well. Although this isn't technically a recommended practice, and I wouldn't use it in production unless there was a very specific reason to, and I had a robust backup solution in place. So a lot of this video will take place in the command line. I'll be connecting via SSH on PuTTY. It really doesn't matter what SSH client you use. You can even follow along in the web accessible system shell under node and shell right here, if you like. First and foremost, to be able to use a disk attached to your machine, it will need to be initialized and completely wiped. I'll assume that we're working with a fresh install of Proxmox, but with drives pulled from other working environments. If you go to your node, and then down to disks, you can see all of the hard disks that are currently attached to the machine. An important note here is to make sure that you know which disk or disks are being used in your actual install of Proxmox. For instance, dev SDA up here holds my Proxmox system, and dev SDE is the internal SD card that I've chosen to install my boot partition onto. Now you could easily remove the drives, insert them into a dock, and clean them that way, or you could use a bootable tool like Gparted, and that would work great. However, I want to do as much of this as possible within the Proxmox environment. So let's start with dev sdb. It has two partitions, and we will get rid of both of those. So in your shell, we'll type fdisk slash dev slash sdb. This will open the fdisk utility, and then what we want to do is reinitialize the disk with a new gpt partition table. So type in g, hit enter, and then w to write. This should delete all of the partitions on the disk and reinitialize it for use. So let's go back to disks and then hit reload. And you can see that dev sdb is ready to be used. Let's go ahead and do that for sdc and sdd as well. Let's go back to our disks and reload. So SDB, SDC, and SDD are all available to be used for storage now. Probably the simplest way to add storage right away is going to be to add a local drive as a directory. This basically allows us to take one drive and mount it to be used as local storage on the node. This is different than creating a directory under the data center as those can be created from any path defined on one of the nodes. We'll be going over that in a bit. Make sure your node is selected, then go down to Disks and Directory. Up here, click on Create Directory, and we'll choose SDC. We'll set the file system to ext4, and then we'll just name this dir01. Make sure that Add Storage is selected so that the storage is made available to the data center, and then click Create. Once it's finished, you should see it as a storage option under your node. You can go here and see a summary of the information, and by default you're able to store backups, VM disks, container volumes, ISO images, container templates, and snippets. Let's discuss LVM. I'll go over these briefly just to give some background. LVM, or Logical Volume Management, basically mimics or emulates the way physical drives operate and interact with one another virtually. It does this through a few layers of abstraction. The basic rundown is that you have your hard disk, or the physical disk that are placed in the machine, and then you have the partitions that are on those disks. A physical volume is the first layer of LVM that ties the partitions on a disk into LVM. A volume group is a group of physical volumes that acts as a sort of virtual drive under LVM. And finally, you have the logical volumes, which are effectively the partitions of the volume group, which you can then apply the file systems to. Personally, I don't like to use LVM or LVM Thin in Proxmox because it can be a bit of a hassle, and compared to ZFS, it falls somewhat short. 
There are a few applications that you might want to use LVM for, but in my opinion, at least in Proxmox, they're few and far between. And likely, if you need to use LVM, you probably already know how to set it up. Again, this is all in the context of Proxmox, as LVM can be useful in other installs of Linux. My understanding of LVM is a bit limited, so if I'm missing something here, please let me know in the comments. All that being said, let's take a look at ZFS. This is a favorite for both home lab and enterprise users alike. I think that a full dive into the advantages and disadvantages of ZFS warrants its own video. So in the meantime, I'll give a brief rundown on how to implement ZFS pools in Proxmox. A note here, ZFS is not recommended for use with hardware RAID, so if you're running logical disks on a hardware RAID card, you should either stick to the hardware RAID or look into setting up your RAID card with HBA or pass-through mode before using ZFS pools. For instance, right now I have this HP server with a P420 card running in HBA mode. So to create a ZFS pool, we'll go to our node, and then under Disks, find ZFS, go to Create ZFS, We'll give it a name, that will be ZFS01, and make sure add storage is checked so that it adds it to our data center. Going over to RAID level, we see a few options. The first is single disk, which is not usually recommended under ZFS unless you have a special use case. Without redundancy, you won't be utilizing many of the features, and if the drive fails, it may be harder to recover information from it. Then there's the standard mirror, aka RAID1, which duplicates data across two drives. Then there's RAID 10, which is a striped mirror, requiring at least four drives. RAID Z1, RAID Z2, and RAID Z3 offer different levels of parity and redundancy, which again, I won't get into the pros and cons of in this video. Put simply, Z1 requires at least three drives and is similar to RAID 5, Z2 requires four drives and offers double parity, and Z3 requires five drives, offering more parity and the ability to recover from three drive failures in a single array. Right now, we only have two disks available, so we'll select Mirror, and both of the drives. We'll leave Compression and A-Shift alone, as these are the defaults recommended by Proxmox, and then we'll hit Create. Now our ZFS pool should be active and ready. As you can see, with a ZFS pool by itself, we're only allowed to store VM images and containers by default. If you'd like to do more with it, say save backups and store ISOs, we'll need to create a dataset under the pool and then add that as a directory. A dataset is basically analogous to a mounted folder that can have conditions applied to it. Again, this will be covered in a later video. Creating a dataset is fairly straightforward, so we'll go ahead and go to our shell, and then we'll use the command zfs create, and then enter our pool, which is zfs01 slash, we'll call the dataset data01 dash o mount point equals slash, and then we'll call the mount point zfs data. So we've created the dataset. Now all we have to do is go back into our Proxmox web GUI, go to Data Center, and then go to Storage, and then click Add, and Directory. The ID we'll call ZFS Data 01. The directory will be slash ZFS Data. And for content, we want to be able to store anything we want in this data set. Click Add, and the storage should become available under your node. If we go here, you'll see that we can now add all types of data to our ZFS dataset in our ZFS pool. The last method of adding storage that I will go over today will be adding an NFS or CIFS share. For now, I won't be showing you how to set up a network share on a remote machine. We'll reserve that for a different video. We'll already assume that a network share is properly set up and ready to be connected to. In this case, we'll be attaching the ISO directory from my file server. For that, we'll go back to our data center and then to storage, and then click add. You can choose NFS or CIFS, depending on which type of network share you have. Mine is a CIFS share. Then we'll call this ISO. The server is going to be file server 02. Enter the username and password. The share name is going to be ISOs, and then we'll enter our domain. For content, we'll make sure that ISO image is selected. This will be where our ISOs are stored. Then we'll click Add, and we should now have a directory under our Proxmox data center for ISOs. And here you'll see that I've already added a few of the more common ISOs that I use in my home lab. 
All right, so we've gone over adding a local directory storage, adding a ZFS pool, and adding a network file share. I believe that about wraps it up for this video. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or if you run into any issues, feel free to let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.